children of Israel, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Hey, Shalom, this is Brother Yawama, GMS, South Carolina. All right, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shah, Baha Shem Rekha Kadash. I'm going to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth and sincerity. All right, may the blessing of election be upon your house. Now I'm on road for work and, uh, you know, with a, with a group of men, mostly Jake, pretty much all Jake. All right, so... um. I woke up this morning, what inspired this lesson, man, is, you know, we're on the road, these guys, you know, we're, we're, in, we're in different sprinters and things like that. These guys smoke weed the whole way up here. Talked about all kind of wickedness. Um, you know, I, I don't even want to mention it. You know, all kind of filthy conversation. And um, I had the nerve to get up this morning and, and the music everybody's listening to is the gospel music. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. and dude, That's what everybody's, you know, playing. Everybody's, you know, they're in, they're in the lobby and uh, playing it on the speaker and then they all sitting here. And I just thought to myself, man, damn, there's no accountability with Christianity. It requires no change. That's why when people come across this truth and we say, hey, there's certain things that you have to stop doing. You have to put off the old man and take on the new. It becomes something evil to them. It becomes something evil to them because it requires for them to change, to operate on a different vibration. See, what's what's evil to Christians is things that make them uncomfortable or things that don't make them feel good or things that are not gratification to their flesh. Because the things aren't gratification to their flesh, they look at it as being evil. All right. So the, the Christianity is all about pleasing the flesh. It's not about building the spirit. You see? So, you know, it, it's all about pushing a, a lack of accountability, a do as thou wilt. As long as, you know, you fall in line with the with the, with the the philosophy and the, the wine that this devil has pushed you, everything's good. Right? That's why you get those sayings that are not in the scriptures, like, uh, come, as, come as you are. Okay? Which is not in the Bible. We had uh, a couple weeks ago, and down there in Myrtle Beach, we had those two girls come up. I'm pretty sure some of you guys seen it. And she, she was so adamant and so sure of herself. And she said, the Bible says, come as you are. We asked her, hey, you know, well, you're going to have to, you know, change your appearance. Look how you dress. You're not supposed, a woman's not supposed to present herself in that fashion, especially out in public. Well, the Lord said, come as you are. I, you know what I mean? We had to tell her, hey, that's not in the scriptures. She was, she was upset and irate about it. You know, that's why you get those things like that. Oh, the Lord knows my heart. When that's not true at all. You have, um... What is it? Uh, go to the book of Jeremiah. And so is the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. All right. So you, you can't you can't depend on your, your flesh and, and you, you know the, the vibration and philosophy that you grew up with here in America because it's going to be contrary to the Most High. Who's the rulership? Who told you to think that way? Who made the things that are okay in the society okay? You know. All right. Let's check it out. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe you know the whole congregation and brotherhood. We just, maybe we don't know the scriptures. So I typed in come as you are in the search bar, and these are the results that you get. Let's see if we can find it. Hmm. No. No. No, it's not, it's not in here. Okay. All right, so it's Jeremiah 17 and 9. We'll start here. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So your flesh wants to do carnal things. Okay? So that's why you have to build your spirit up to contest that. You understand? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according as his ways. Okay? So if you truly believe and you have faith, works to go along with that faith, you're going to be conducting yourself as instructed. Okay? You can't... You, and that's what Christianity is. People say they believe. They say they love the most high. They say they believe in the word. But they do not the things that he says. All right, Luke 6 and 46. It says, and why call, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not 
the things which I say. And that <laughs> epitomizes everybody that's clung unto Christianity. They make they find an excuse in every way, in every fashion, to actually go against the Lord's word. Not to do it. You know, so it's the difference. You see? Now let's go back to Jeremiah 17. Alright. Jeremiah 17, 9. Actually, we're here at 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Same thing it says in um, Revelation 22, right? You know, so those who subscribe to the notions, to the rhetoric of Christianity, man, they're severely malnourished in the spirit. They have not exercised or built up their spirit in any kind of way to endure any test. And don't forget, we will be tested. So no, no, we, we have to end, go through things. The scriptures say that he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. All right. So people in the church hollering out, "Oh, I'm saved by the blood." No, I'm a God one has not happened yet. And you have to endure the tests that are coming upon us in this time. And we know it's the end because the prophecies are speaking. But again, in Christianity, they don't even go into prophecies, so they don't even know what time of the end. You know what I mean? That's that's why there's. In their minds, there's no consequence for doing the things that are contrary to the word. They figure they could, while they're young, they could have fun and do all the wickedness under the sun. And when they're old and useless, they can go sit in church and clap their hands. Not so, man. Not so at all. We have to be building our spirit up because a great test is coming. Many perils are coming upon the earth. And there's only one way to straighten their way to be delivered from it. You know what I mean? But that's what Christianity does to you, man. It gives you those notions of things like unconditional love. No. Love is, you know, something that's going to happen based off of a condition. Like the Lord says, if you love me, keep my commandments. We were treated a certain way based off if we were keeping up our end of the deal. Un unconditional love is a facade. It's just a, it's a pretty thing to say to women. When you look up unconditional, it says not subject to any conditions. Okay, no accountability. But we know that the Lord is all about accountability. So unconditional love is known as an affection without any limitations or love without conditions. This term sometimes associated with other terms such as true altruism or complete love. BS, man. This is not how the scriptures describe what our duty is to the Most High. This is not how the scriptures describe how you're supposed to treat your brother. Based on no conditions, you can do whatever you want. Do as thou wilt. That's what Christianity teaches, which is not a, a, a biblical notion, man. Which is not a biblical theme, which is not uh, the will of the Most High. So, in the flesh, in this life, there's a constant battle going on between your spirit and your flesh. Christianity caters more to the flesh. Hands down. There's no way around it. It doesn't cater to your spirit because it's, it's not concerned with spiritual things, man. So those who subscribe to Christianity at the end of the day, when, when as shit gets more um, visible to see who's siding with who, it's going to be plain to see that they're enemies of the Most High. Because they're going to align with the agenda. They're going to align with the new world order. You know, and we're, we're against that in every way. All right, this is Galatians 5 and 16. It reads, this I say then, walk in the spirit. Mm hmm. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, right? And the spirit against the flesh. And we're on the side of the spirit, my brothers. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. Of the earth.